Hi everyone, uh, my name is Pedro Alquerque and uh, I'll be talking about uh, MariaDB high availability in a cocktail mix with Envoy and Orchestrator. Uh, for those who don't know me, uh, I'm a database engineer at WISE. I've been working with uh, databases for about eight years, uh, mainly focused on MariaDB, MySQL and MongoDB. And outside work, I am a handball player and uh, I have interest in reportage film photography. About WISE, um, it was founded uh, in 2011 um, and rebranded earlier this month um, from TransRise into WISE. Um, over 2,200 people work with us uh, from uh, over 70 nationalities. Um, we have over 10 million customers and process around 4.5 billion uh, pounds in transactions every month. I'll leave the rest of the numbers uh, for you to, to see. I'm not going to go over them. Uh, regarding the data source that we, we host um, at TransferWise, at WISE, uh, we have um, around 170 clusters, um, uh, 170 MariaDB clusters, uh, around 350 Postgres clusters, uh, about 20 MongoDB clusters, and we also um, managed, um, we host a few other data stores uh, from ClickHouse, ClickHouse to Neo4j and Prometheus. Um, for most of the MariaDB and Postgres clusters, um, we host them in, in uh, AWS RDS. Uh, for MongoDB clusters, we we um, we run them on EC2. Uh, for some uh, use cases, we run MariaDB and Postgres on EC2. But I'm going to talk um, about uh, MariaDB high availability. But what does high availability mean? Um, both both primary and replicas should be available, should be reachable. Um, in case uh, you want to do the read writes against high primary, then um, you should focus on the availability of the top, the top primary node. Uh, it means that there has to be an automated failover in the event of a failure. Um, also, uh, this process uh, has to detect the failure um, and also avoid false positives. We don't want the process uh, to perform a failover if there is no need for that. Um, we also kind of are interested in, in, in uh, and this high availability means a reasonable estimation time completion. Uh, we don't want uh, a failover to happen in one hour, right? So this has to be this, this, um, this time uh, to recover has to be reasonable. And one of the things that uh, we believe it's usually not taken into consideration when we're talking about high availability, but we need to consider if the if the process that we are and the data stores that we are using allow rolling maintenance. Uh, this is critical for services that require um, a very a very high uptime. Uh, regarding High availability, there are two concepts, the write high availability and read high availability. Uh, these are very distinct concepts. Um, for the majority of deployments where you have a primary um, and replicas, um, we're talking about a single node for a primary. Um, we are not talking about sharding here. And uh, for the replicas, um, we can have multiple nodes. Uh, for high to achieve high availability uh, in replicas, modern drivers they already allow 
to pass um, a set number of, of, of replicas and uh, a driver will know basically what, what are the nodes that are reachable. But we're talking here specifically about right high availability. So there are some considerations uh, and it depends on the use case, but for our use case, uh, we cannot have data loss. Uh, we're talking about financial data and uh, transactions, etc. So we cannot um, we cannot allow data loss split split brain scenarios as well uh, because the time to recover those will be uh, huge. Uh, we want the possibility to 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 um, to be able to perform graceful failovers and. This is useful when uh, we want to perform rolling rolling maintenances. We want to trigger uh, a primary failover. We want as well failover see if the primary crashes, and um, we also want replicas to follow the new primary. And uh, last but not least, a uh, possibility for the when there is a failover, the old primary to follow the new primary. Uh, we used to run um, our infrastructure in an our own data center many years ago. And um, I'm just going to go very quickly on uh, how we used to, how we used to uh, perform the failovers. So, uh, Basically, uh, we used to run uh, um, a three-node cluster, um, a primary, secondary, uh, one primary and two secondaries. Um, and uh, um, the applications would, would use, uh, would query uh, DNS and would get the, the C name for, for, for the um, would get the based on the C name they they would get what what node uh, they would uh, they would connect to. Um, so in case the primary uh, would go down, uh, we would have to reconfigure replication. So we would have to promote one secondary, change replication on the other secondary to follow from the new primary and uh, update DNS. So this would be it. So as you can see, this recovery procedure is manual and slow, and uh, you don't want to do this uh, uh, in the middle of the night. Um, so when we migrated to AWS, we had to offload uh, all the relational databases to RDS uh, because that gave us a peace of mind. Um, when um, so so if we, if there was any 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 issue with the, the primary, uh, we would we would uh, rely on uh, RDS automation to 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 do the failover for us. Uh, but RDS, although RDS is great, uh, for our tier one services, um, we lack on uh, some features that uh, that we actually need, like um, the failover procedure. Uh, um, we would have to, we need it um, much faster than what RDS provides. And we also want the possibility to, to easily do rolling maintenances, um, at least like these two, these two um, features, these two features that we consider are are critical to uh, uh, are critical to the tier one services. So let's check the cocktail recipe I mentioned in the beginning. Um, so. There are 
new components to make this possible. Um, one is orchestrator. You, I'm pretty sure you are already uh, aware of this really nice um, software. Um, it's basically a replication management tool. Um, it um, has an holistic approach. Um, uh, I guess a cluster to understand if there is anything wrong with it. Um, and it is it's very nice to to uh, to uh, to avoid false positives. Um, basically, it's 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 used. We use it to recover our primary uh, in case there is there is a in 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 case it's down or it is uh, network isolated. So and it also gives us the chance to to. Um, to manually uh, trigger a uh, failover in case we need it. The other component, um, it's uh, something we built um, internally. It's the orchestrated health check. This, this software is uh, basically a service that is installed on all the database nodes and um, it queries orchestrated metadata to understand, um, based on some rules, to understand if this node is a replica, if it no, if it's no, if if this node is a primary, and um, and uh, if its node is um, downtime or not. So it it, it queries orchestrator metadata to get that information, and. This uh, this software um, um, exposes um, some HTTP codes depending on uh, if we query the primary endpoint or the replica endpoint. Envoy is a service proxy. Uh, we use it across the whole s services that run uh, in WISE. Um, it's deployed as a sidecar in each one of the services. Uh, we use um, Envoy for all service-to-service -service calls, um, we, and 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 we use Envoy um, to to um, for services to call databases as well. And this Envoy, um, it's um, the way it knows where to route the connections, the service connections uh, to the database, it queries orchestrator metadata uh, for each one of the database nodes that live in the in the listener pool and will uh, um, depending on these HTTP codes, it will route the it will route the connections and, uh, and queries to those nodes or not. Um, so this is a simple configuration of, of um, how we set up uh, Envoy. Um, basically, it's it's so uh, we have two listeners, uh, a master and replicas. The and we configure um, uh, a port uh, for each one of the listeners. Um, and then we configure what are the database hosts that belong to that cluster. So if, let's say, database host number one is a primary and the other two are replicas, um, Envoy will, will, um, uh, will know that is a primary when querying, um, when calling um, orchestrate a health check on the master endpoint. If it returns at 200, then Envoy knows that that node is, uh, is a primary. If it returns a 500, then it removes that node from the master listener. And the same for replicas. Um, so this is the 
deployment uh, that we set up using Envoy and Orchestrator. It's a procedure that the the um, the failover procedure takes about you know in average 10 to 15 seconds. It will always depend on the if the if the semi-synchronous replicas uh, replicas are laying or not. Um, but basically, we have um, this is one of our most simpler uh, deployments. We have one primary and two secondaries. Um, each one of the EC2 nodes run the instance, the MariaDB instance, orchestrator health check, and orchestrator. And uh, Envoy, as, as I mentioned previously, runs locally on each service. So when a primary um, is down, let's say, Orchestrator will understand what's going on with that and it will choose a new primary. When Orchestrator chooses what is going to be the new primary, um, it will reconfigure topology. So Orchestrator will elect uh, a new primary and will refactor the replication topology. So the old primary will replicate from the new primary and the other secondary will will replicate from the new primary um, because this the old primary uh, was down uh, envoy would, is not serving any requests to that node then when uh, we finished the when we disabled the downtime that was uh, issued by orchestrator to the node that that uh, that was down envoy starts to to uh, to um, serve requests to that secondary if uh, we have read read only um, if we have read only queries so now it's time for the demo um, so what I'm going to do is um, there is a service uh, that um, that um, is is running on the same topology that I just showed you and what I'm going to do is I'm going to query the the amount of connections on uh, for that server uh, that exists on uh, on the on the primary and on the replica that I'm going to promote. Okay, so so basically, uh, you see on the bottom left that's the current primary. Uh, you can see that the the service is uh, has thirty four connections to that node. And uh, on the bottom right, it's a prime. It's a secondary that does not have any connections. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trigger a failover that will promote the node two as primary, and we are going to see how much time it's going to take. So uh, you can see on the node one, uh, the connections went down to zero. On node two, the connections went up to 34. And it was about like 10 seconds. So um, we believe this, is, this, was, um, a, this was a very, it's a very interesting setup uh, since um, we, don't, uh, we don't require um, any extra component like max scale or proxy SQL, although those tools are really good, but since we are using Envoy already across the whole fleet of services, and we don't require any specific uh, feature uh, from these two proxies, uh, we thought 
that um, this would fit better our purpose. Um, so this is how we did it. Um, so now it's time for it's time for uh, some questions. Um, so yeah, less downtime, more fun. Uh, we are very happy with this setup. Well, we managed to we managed to um, increase availability for our our tier tier one services. So thank you so much and uh, I'm looking forward to your questions. Thank you. Great, thank you. Thank you, Pedro. Very, very interesting setup you have there. So I'm, I'm curious about uh, the movement of your HA infrastructure over time. Um, you mentioned that at first you used to run, you know, in your own data center, you had one primary, a couple of secondaries, and then now you have 170 MariaDB cluster mostly on, on, on AWS. How did you get from, from one to the other? Um, were you using MariaDB all the time? Which versions and what steps did you take along the way? So uh, in the beginning, when I, when I joined TransWise or Wise, uh, I'm still using TransWise, but <laughs> I'm still getting used to the new name. Uh, when I joined Wise um, about four years ago, uh, we were actually running my SQL 5.6. And uh, we faced a lot of performance issues at the time and lack of some features already present in MariaDB that uh, um, that led us to, to steal in our data center to migrate from uh, MySQL into MariaDB. And, uh, and then with the growth of a company, uh, the growth of uh, features and the and a breakdown of our monolith, uh, we ended up with, with, uh, with 170 um, RDS instances. Uh, we most we grew mostly in AWS. Um, if I remember correctly, we were still in our data center with about fifty microservices and our monolith. And uh, the boom was 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 while was already in uh, AWS. Okay. So you mentioned you've got uh, MariaDB clusters, you've got Postgres clusters, you've got MongoDB, and, uh, as well as a couple of others you mentioned, ClickHouse and uh, Prometheus and Neo4j. Why that particular breakdown? Where do you find MariaDB useful? Where do you find Postgres useful, MongoDB? Um, I can tell a little bit of the history. Um, so uh, Postgres came, uh, um, was brought in... Uh, uh, by one of uh, the DBAs that used to work with us in the past. Uh, he was our first database engineer. And uh, he brought Postgres in-house to address um, one of our main problems at the time, which was the analytical database. And Postgres outperformed uh, MySQL at the time. And, uh, and since um, and since uh, engineers or some of the engineers had Postgres experience, uh, they started re requesting Postgres, right? So now uh, we have like two ecosystems in relational databases, MariaDB and Postgres, um, with no, no way, with no specific requirements of using one or the other one. Um, there are some examples of probably some extensions that we use in Postgres, uh, for instance, timescale DB, that some services really require that. But apart from, from that, it's more, it's more uh, if some teams are more, are, more, are more comfortable with Postgres or MariaDB. Uh, regarding MongoDB, uh, we use MongoDB to address scalability uh, issues and uh, end up time as well. Okay. And then um, orchestrate a health check. Uh, are you planning to open source this at some point? Uh, probably not orchestrate a health check as it is. Uh, this was something that we had to quickly develop 
uh, to, to work with Envoy. But we'll be looking at um, having this feature of reporting um, in an HTTP interface uh, to the orchestrator agents. So um, we are planning to work together with, uh, with Shlomi um, and, uh, and propose this. So we would be moving that feature from, from orchestrator I'll check and integrated it into orchestrator agents. Did you need to do any particular uh, configurations in MariaDB to get it to, to work well with Orchestrator? Yes, we did. Uh, unfortunately, we had to disable uh, MariaDB GTIDs. And uh, this is something um, I actually spoke with um, MariaDB developers in, uh, in Zolip uh, because Orchestrator, in order to understand the status of a primary, uh, it kind of does a, a fast restart of the uh, SQL threads. And if that replica is lagging, MariaDB will purge the relay logs if using MariaDB GTID. And Orchestrator will see, hey, this is actually not lagging. So it will promote a lagging node that, uh, that uh, wasn't supposed to be promoted. So, uh, we disabled MariaDB GTID, not disable, uh, not the per not generating the MariaDB GTID, but we disabled the. We are using bin log file and position to coordinate to 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 set up replicas using the orchestrated pseudo GTID. So it's their implementation of of uh, GTIDs. So what are you looking at in future? Any upcoming changes for databases? Yeah. Um, it's, it, this setup um, brings a little bit more of operational toil into our team. Um, since RDS, uh, with RDS, we offload a lot of, a lot of the operational toil. Uh, we will be looking at, um, at VTES with MariaDB backend, um, starting from next quarter. We'll be looking at at see if we can uh, if um, see if we can uh, integrate that. It's a big shift, uh, but we believe that um, moving to to home containers it's something that that uh, and reducing the operational and reduce the operational toil is something that will allow us to to scale uh, without having to scale human resources. Okay. So that's the main reason for, for choosing it really is looking at reducing load on your on your team uh, and and uh, and be prepared to and be prepared to um, to uh, to scale out in case we need that's that's right now there is no need because uh, we split we broke down our monolith and um, but in the future we will have to scale out, and Vitesse will give us that will give us that higher option. Um, of course, running with MariaDB on the back end. Which versions of MariaDB are you running currently? Is it are they all the same version, or do you have a mix? No, we uh, we are running we are running 10.3 uh, most of the in most of the clusters. Uh, we are on the path to upgrade to MariaDB 10.4, and we have MariaDB 10.4 uh, on the clusters that are running uh, Orchestrator because we have to have the automatic failover. And uh, the reason that we are running at least 10.4 with Orchestrator is um, we need that feature that uh, on uh, MariaDB needs to kill the on a graceful shutdown. Uh, we need that feature wait for all slaves so uh, we don't lose data when there is uh, a graceful sh shutdown. But our plan is to, to migrate this quarter is to upgrade all the RDS uh, to MariaDB 10.4 and uh, probably early next year to MariaDB 10.5. Well, I think that's all we have time for. So thanks very much for joining us, Pedro. Thank you so much.